So welcome to class, everybody. My name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And if you need to contact me, there's my name. And I'm on the contact page. That's at nachi.org slash contact. And you registered through NACHI TV, N-A-C-H-I dot TV, where we put on live online classes that are free for everyone. You don't have to be a home inspector. Um, you don't have to be a member of InterNACHI. Um, it's open to everyone. And if you can't make it, it's always good to register for a class because we'll send you out a link to the video recording of the class. This class is being video recorded right now. Uh, we had about 400 people register to attend this class, which is um, all about marketing and business for home inspectors. And I was really impressed by the number of students. Um, we had folks from all over the world. Um, Alabama, United States and Canada, and one from Ireland, um, and just about all of the um, states in the United States and provinces, um, including Saskatchewan, uh, Hawaii, um, Iowa, a couple people from Iowa, um, Nebraska, one student from Nebraska, hey, how are you? And Ontario, Pennsylvania, Quebec, Saskatchewan, there, there it is, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. So um, you have gone through a lot. Um, I can't imagine what is going on at the U.S. Virgin Islands, but uh, thank you for joining. I hope you're safe and sound, and um, I'm really uh, pleased that you registered to attend our home inspection business class. And today is um, September 19th, 2017, and what we wanna do is talk about business and marketing for home inspectors. Just so you know my background, um, I was a home inspector for about a dozen years, performed thousands of home inspections and also ancillary inspections. And I owned my own business company, uh, home inspection business. And um, I had at the height uh, five home inspectors. So um, I know a little bit about operating a business from my own perspective. Um, and I'd like to share that with you. I also learned a little bit by working at InterNACHI and helping other home inspectors be successful in their business. So there's a few things I'd like to share over the next hour or so. If you'd like to ask questions and interrupt me, I tend to ramble on, uh, please <laughs> raise your hand. Uh, you can raise your hand digitally by um, typing in your question and I'll try to um, look for those questions as they pop up. I'm looking at my other screen over here and everyone's saying, hey, um, good morning. Um, Randall says, just checking if I can communicate this way and not through a mic. Correct. So logistics, you should be able to see me. I cannot see you. I can't turn on your camera or anything. You should be able to hear me. I can't hear you because your mic is off. Um, there is a way for us to agree to turn on your mic if you wanted to, but th that's all your control. And I don't, we have so many students, it would be unable, we'll be unable to hear each other if we're all started talking. So um, I'm going to talk and you should be able to hear me and see me and look at my slides. Um, I'm video recording the, the class. You can watch it later if you miss anything. If you wanted to ask a question, feel free in that chat box. Is making video presentations of maintenance items a benefit? That's a great I idea. So as a home inspector, oh, I would get online with as much stuff as possible. In my social media, um, not necessarily Twitter, but I like Facebook because it's so easy to upload videos and pictures. And um, if you're gonna produce a video about how to, um, I'd say you, you start thinking about um, doing selfie videos, you can grab your camera, grab your phone, right? And do a selfie video, right? And it doesn't have to be highly produced. You know, nowadays, um, the more informal it is, the more real it is. So hold your camera like this, do a video. You, we could hear you if you cup your hand and the microphone is on the right and you cup your hand, um, that'll bounce the sound into the microphone. Um, don't get too far away, you know, and don't get too close. And do a bunch of videos about, Doug, this is a great idea, um, about how to operate your home, how to maintain it, and how to save home energy. Do a dozen videos 
upload them to your YouTube channel, embed them on your website, share them on your Facebook. That's awesome. It's a great idea, Doug. Uh, there are other topics that we can talk about. We can talk about anything you want, but I bulleted these, right? So we're going to talk about a free business development tool. What's the point of being in business? What's the purpose of marketing? How to think like a business owner. Free home inspection business course. We're going to talk about delegating. And we're going to talk about perceived value and cost. I really like that topic. You should look up the word commodity. Differentiation. Branding versus marketing. They're not the same thing. Pablo Picasso, um, there's a story that I like to tell about Pablo. Offering the right inspection service at the right time, about lemonades and umbrellas. We're going to compare a franchise to what InterNACHI offers. We're going to focus on net profit margins, how to calculate those profit margins, and how to calculate what you should charge for your inspection fees. We're going to talk about risk, taking risk, and managing that risk, and how mobility increases your billable hourly rate. And why would I hire you instead of the next person? And then putting your report in the hands of potential clients, we can talk about that. And then how to get a team of marketing professionals to work for you at no cost. Save the best for last. So, are you ready? Okay. You got to go here. I don't care if you are a new inspector, you're a veteran inspector, you've got more things to do that seem impor more important, um, you don't have anything to do today. No matter who you are, if you're interested in the home inspection business, we have an online business development tool. And it's niched, geared for home inspectors. So if you want to be a, a baker or a candlestick maker, this isn't going to work for you. So go to bizvelop.com. B-I-Z-V-E-L-O-P.com. Let's go there. And I'll show you at least the first page, what it looks like. So it's familiar to you, right? And this is powered by Nick Ramico, who happens to be my brother and the founder of InterNACHI, right? And so um, what it does is it asks you a series of really good questions. And then there's this built-in intelligence that adjusts based upon your answers. And it will help you identify where you're strong in your business and take your business to the next level by suggesting things that you should do related to business and marketing. And it will also identify your weaknesses, which is what I have always liked. I love feedback um, from complaining customers. <laughs> I always want to know what I'm doing wrong. What I'm doing right, uh, you can probably, you, you know what you're doing right. But you, what you really want to know is what you're doing wrong, right? So if somebody always, if somebody gives, um, asks me for their feedback, let's say I go to a restaurant or something, what do you think? I always give them feedback, positive. But if there's something negative, I, I want to tell them in a nice way, so that they can get that criticism. Think about you. You get that criticism, and you solve it, and you turn it into something positive. Right? And this business development tool does something similar to that, where it tells you what you need to work on by going through this series um, of questions and answers and suggestions. And you can take your time. It saves where you are and um, so you don't lose your place. Oh, this is Natchi TV. This is Natchi TV's homepage. So over here, you've got some. Uh, um, free classes that you can register for. Just click here. So here's our ultimate home inspector marketing business class. And upcoming is a home inspection class, how to perform a home inspection according to a standards of practice. Um, and uh, I do those once a month, and those are really good. And um, be sure to click the tabs on the top um, to look for, um, let's say, a, a video of a prior class from, about marketing. Uh, we have a marketing page. Um, so go to bizvelop.com. Uh, it's free. It's a free benefit. And it costs you only your time and creative thought and effort. So not bad. So what is the point of going in business? Sounds like a silly question, right? 
I'm not going to the next slide until someone answers that. I'll stay here all day. I'm not going to say another word. What's the point of going in business? What's the point of being in business? Why are you doing this? Because if you don't know, I can't tell you. So why are you in business? What is the point of being beautiful, beautiful, making money, make money, make money, make tons of money, help others and make money to make a living and support your family, uh, to create a customer base, to help people make informed decisions, financial freedom, freedom, be my own boss. I love these answers. Yeah. The point of going into business isn't to make a good living. If you want to make a good living, you get a good job, right? If you want to uh, support your family and pay the bills, you ought to think about getting a good job. If you want to make a ton of cash, stacks of money, that's the point of being in business because there's a ton of risk that's involved. The point of being in business and taking on all of that risk that it entails is to make a lot of money, right? And then you could do things like, you can do great things. Um, in the world. You can help the world, support your lifestyle. Um, you can also take care of your family and pay the bills and go on vacation, right? So there was, um, there was, a, there was a home inspector who came in yesterday at InterNACHI headquarters and he was at, at the point of taking risk and he wanted advice. He just quit his job and he wants to totally change his life and do something new. So he came to InterNACHI headquarters, he looked at our classroom, he talked to the director, talked to our lead instructor, and looked at the House of Horrors, and talked to staff, and now he's going to jump. He's going to take that risk, that jump, that leap from doing a, a, a having a good job to taking a ton of risk and being in business for himself and rewarding himself with all that stacks of money, right? So he wanted to know how to do it. And whether he should do it. Well, of course I said yes. You know, you got to do it. Just a second. I'm going to turn down the thermostat. There you go. So it involves taking business involves taking risk. I I sold about 10 years ago. I sold my house, gave away all my possessions right out of my driveway, didn't sell it. Stuck my family in a van, drove across the country, and started a new life. That's taking risk. That's a huge risk to take. You may be thinking about going into commercial inspections. You're a home inspector and you want to know how to transfer over to doing just commercial inspections because home inspections, you work in the hundreds of dollars. Commercial inspections, you work literally in the thousands of dollars, right? Little difference. The work scope is different. So it's a different animal, really. It's a totally different animal. In a home inspection, you typically start off with doing all the work yourself. In a commercial inspection, when you get really good, you're essentially just a manager. And you're managing a team that you've subcontracted to provide you with information that you send to your client. You're like this manager, right? And that's risky. There's risk there, right? What happens if I fail in my commercial business? Maybe I need to put two feet in two different worlds, my, my feet in two different worlds, right? And stay in my home inspection business and, and go into commercial, right? What is, there's a lot of risk in doing your first home inspection, right? A lot of inspectors, new inspectors are gun shy. They don't want to do their first home inspection because they don't know what they're doing, they think, right? They have all the knowledge that they need, the technical aspects, but they're afraid of something, right? Afraid of crashing and burning. Um, I would say don't be afraid. Take that risk because um, when you take upon risk, you will be rewarded for taking upon that risk. And that is the point of being in business, to make a ton of cash. But it comes with risk. What's the purpose of marketing? Again, I'm not going to move. I'm not moving from this slide. What's the purpose of marketing? Oh. To get clients, bring in the cash, getting customers to drive business, to get clients and contacts. Those are good answers. Yep. Um, almost. The purpose of marketing isn't to get more inspection work to fill your calendar. That's not the point of marketing. If you have an empty calendar, the point isn't 
to fill it. Marketing is all about filling it over, overflow, choking on the amount of phone calls that come in. The purpose of marketing is to create so many customers, you can't possibly do all the jobs. That's the point of marketing. And marketing never ends. It never ends. Big deal, you've got your booked week, uh, your week booked out. Don't ever stop marketing. Big deal, all of your inspectors are um, doing jobs this month. Great. Don't stop. That's not the point. The purpose of marketing is not to fill your calendar, it's to overflow it, right? To have so much demand for your services that you are now in the position of delegation, of managing, of dishing out your extra stuff to subcontractors, right? You don't want to be in the business to um, be busy and to work really hard, right? And fill your schedule. I'm busy today. Oh, I'm working hard. That's not the point. The point of marketing is to just be overflowed, to have your phone ring off the hook, not ring on the hook. Oh, I'm so old. Phones used to actually hang on the wall on a hook. So yeah, that's the point of marketing, to create so many customers that you can't service them all. It's not enough that you're just a good inspector and you've got jobs this week, right? That's not going to carry you through and be successful as a business owner. You can't just train yourself technically and be competent to do home inspections and disregard the point, the purpose of marketing. So you have to do both, unfortunately. That's the truth. You have to be really good at what you do technically and performing home inspections. Eventually you're going to give that off to someone else. And you also have to be really good at marketing and marketing never stops regardless of how busy you are. That's not the point. Working hard and being busy isn't the point. The purpose of marketing is to have that overflow. So you have to get to a point where you consider yourself an owner or operator of a home inspection business. And you, you're an owner of a business and you operate a business and you just happen to do home inspections. You could be a, um, a candlestick maker, right? You could create widgets. It doesn't matter what you're actually doing for the purpose of this presentation. Once you start thinking as an owner, I, so I almost remember the day that I just changed my mind and I started saying, I'm, no, I'm not a home inspector. Um, I was an owner and operator of a home inspection business. I own and operate a home inspection business. I own and operate a business that does home inspections. We offer home inspection services. Why do you want to do that? Because you want to get to the point where it's not just you in your business. Because there's only so much that you can do. If you're doing everything, it's hard to make those stacks of dollar bills. You have to, um, and, and in this class, I'm going to show you how. You have to figure out what is really important to you and what you should be doing and delegating to others to do for you or with you. And to think like a business owner, we have a home inspection business course and it's free and it's online, open to everyone. And if you haven't taken it, you really should. Here are the topics. I'll tell you why to take it, even if you're in business right now, because there are a few things in this um, course for veteran home inspectors, veteran business owners that you haven't thought of. That's the feedback that we get. When, we, when everyone goes through, they learn something new that boosts their business. And if you're brand new, it's almost critical that you take a home inspection business course. The technical stuff, oh, we've got hundreds of courses, hundreds of training videos. There's classes that we host all over the world, live classes. You're eventually going to have to stop that. You've got enough knowledge, technical expertise, competence to do a home inspection. You're going to have to learn how to conduct business. 
operate a business that's successful. And there's a couple things you need to know. And we put all that stuff in the home inspection business course. It's really good. It's free. It's online. Learn at your own pace. Pop in and out anytime you want. There's um, text, there's videos, there's pictures of other inspectors. And it includes the simple stuff like choosing a name, a location, do you want to work at home or not, and the pros and cons of that, and financing your business, getting money. There's also calculating what you should charge for your fees and making sure that that calculation includes profit. How do you know what to charge for each inspection that you offer? It's based upon math. It's calculated. It's not a guess. It has maybe something to do with looking at your competitors, but it's, that's more of a um, uh, of kind of throwing your elbows around and seeing who can beat someone else in value. You know, in judging value. We'll talk about that later. But pricing your fees is in this course. Working on your branding and marketing, how to get your business online, and communicating. When you become a home inspector, you're actually uh, on stage. You're a performer. You're meeting people, you're making friends, you're meeting not people, your neighbors who should be invited every year to your um, cookout, right? And at your house, because they are your neighbors. Welcome them to the neighborhood as you do your inspection. That's how I treated my clients, as neighbors. Treated them really well. And I kept in communication with them, because they're in my neighborhood. Well, that's part of, the, of chapter 10, I believe. Um, how to hire employees and um, build your business with growth, right? That's all in this course. It's an amazing course that you should take. And it's online, and it's free. And if you haven't taken it, it's OK. Take it tonight. Spend one hour a night on your business. One of, one of the things that um, my brother Nick, founder of Internachi, has said, excuse me, one of the best things that you can do for your business, I wish I had one, is to buy a hammer. I don't have a hammer in my studio. Buy a hammer and smash your TV. <laughs> and don't watch TV every night. Spend one hour a night on your business. If you think about it, if I spend one hour a night, that's five nights, five hours per week, and there are um, how many weeks in a month? Four. So that's five, 10, 15, 20. That's 20 hours a month. 20 hours a month. That's if, like if I was doing a full-time job, that's half of a week. That's working an entire half of a week. Over six months or over a year, oh, I'm going to be working 20 times 12, 240, 20 times 12, 240 hours. 240 hours. By the end of one year, if I spend one hour five days a week instead of watching TV, one hour less of watching TV and spend one hour, right? 240 hours at the end of the year. 240 hours is six weeks, full-time job. It's like having another employee work six weeks on marketing. I'm ahead of my competition. If I do that and my competitor doesn't, because I know they're not, they're watching TV. They're watching their favorite TV show. I love Netflix. I hope all my competitors are subscribers of all those shows and watch a lot of movies and TVs. And I love my competitors when they grown men playing games. I love grown men playing games that are my competitors. Because I'm going to crush them in the market, right? Because they're wasting their time. And I'm going to do, at the end of one year, six weeks of marketing strategy and implementation to beat them. And they won't know what's happening because they'll be busy watching their TV, right? They didn't smash their TV. I did. So that's a different perspective. Maybe you haven't heard that. Maybe you have. That's how I think. You have to think about your time. It's the most precious thing you do. And marketing strategies are never finished. They're 
always implemented, always strategy, always being created, always trying to find out how to be better than my competition by adding value. I want to talk about that later. When you get to the point of being an owner and operator of your own business, then you think totally different about your life. You are now going to use the word delegate. You delegate things that you don't want to do because you're the owner and operator of the business, right? So here's how you do it. Success comes from delegation, by the way. You can't do everything on your own. You can for a while, but you're going to burn out and I'm going to beat you anyways because I've got more feet, more hands in my company than you do. I got more brain power in my company than you do. You've got only one brain and you can only do so many inspections a day. I'm going to, I'm going to beat you, right? I'm my pie. My slice of the pie is going to be much larger, right? And there's a lot I can do with a bigger slice of pie. If you have a little slice, you're doing a, a good living, paying the bills. That's great. Uh, I probably won't even notice you in my market. Delegate. You write down everything you do during your day. Let's say you pick a day. Pick your entire week. Write down everything that you do, almost everything, right? That is related to your business and conducting your business. And then you rank those tasks about um, what skill level, ask for each task, ask yourself the following three questions. What skill level is needed to do that task? How much time does it take? And how important is it to the company? And you rank them low, medium, and high, right? If this is, if um, performing an inspection is a very high skilled demanding task, it is, then it's high, right? If um, stapling two pieces of paper, that's low, right? Low skill. It doesn't take much time, but it's low skill. And how important it is. Answer those three questions on every task that you do in your business. Tasks with low to medium levels are good things to delegate to someone else, especially if they take a long time to do. Because you don't want to work a lot. That's not the point of being in business, to work hard, right? That's what my dad always said, work hard. Nope. So I wrote down, just in a few minutes, on a, a piece of paper, some, ta some tasks that you may do during your week of being an owner and operator of a successful inspection business. Um, who answers the phone? Who schedules jobs? Who does your designing and printing of your marketing? Who performs home inspections? Like home inspections is a good one. What skill level? That's a high skill level. How much time? Uh, medium, high, right? And how important? It's, it's highly important. So you'll probably want to start off doing all the home inspections yourself, right? Because that's critical to your business. Later on, you'll learn that um, you can get just about anybody to do a great inspection for your company. And you don't actually have to do every inspection. You can hire that out, right? And push yourself away, delegate that, tasks, that, that task. Um, who drives the jobs? Low skill, a lot of time, not very important, right? You might as well delegate that down. Wouldn't it be great to have an employee and all they do during the day, the main task that they do is drive and also um, do setup on on-site job tasks, right? I did have a helper. We did have drivers. We did have people whose job was to pull off the ladder immediately and set up the ladder. Go inside, take the toolbox, set it up for taking the dead front cover off. You don't take the dead front cover and leave it. You get ready to take the dead front cover off. You identify the heating system. You come out and inform the person on the exterior what the heating system is because the exterior compressor kind of looks like an air conditioner and a heat pump, you don't know, right? There's a lot of tasks that um, require very little skill, take a lot of time, and it's somewhat important, right? You probably want to delegate that to someone else. Otherwise, you're doing it. You're investing your precious time doing dumb things that other people can do. I don't want to say dumb things, but you know what I mean, right? So it's a pretty neat, um, I would say almost essential, right? I mean, you can still conduct business without doing this, but if you want to grow in your business and learn about delegation and think of like an owner, an operator, instead of a, a really good inspector, right? Think about all the things you do 
and see if you can delegate down to someone. If you can, you ought to think about hiring. And how do you hire? Well, your marketing should be ringing that phone off the hook, right? So it's, it's, um, it's a bunch of things you got to do at the same time. So you want to keep things that require your skill level for you to do. Management, training of other inspectors, growth, vision of the company, keeping the brand going, handling the money. That's things, those are things that you want to control. And if something is of low importance, you should probably just remove it completely from whatever the company is doing. No one should be doing anything that's not really important. And one of the worst business strategies to make is deciding that you're the only one who can do a great inspection for your company. It took me a long time to realize that. That's why I think it's important to share it. I thought there is really no one else who can do an inspection like me. I'm really good. I'm really good inspector. I'm the only one who can do an inspection at Peach Inspections. I got a partner, you can do one, but no one else. So we're just stuck. Me and my partner doing inspections, three inspections a day, each of us, seven days a week, right? We had that thought in mind. That's dumb. You realize that anybody could do a great inspection for your company, right? They need to be trained, certified, have experience, be mentored. It takes a while, right? To, communication skills need to be developed, but eventually you realize you can have a huge team of inspectors working for you, doing great work for you, for you. One of the things that I like to uh, talk about is this truth. Um, if the perceived value is greater than the cost, then it's a good decision. If the perceived value, the value that um, a person may think or apply to something, a service or a product, the value of that, of receiving that, if it's greater than the cost that it takes to acquire that, like if there's an enormous amount of really good information that I want and I value it because it's going to change my life, like the condition of the home prior to buying it, if you're offering that valuable information, if that information is much greater than the cost, then it's going to be a good decision for your home buying client, the person who hires you to buy that. If it's kind of close, right, then there's something wrong with your business, your message, your brand, your marketing strategy. But if it's overwhelmingly valuable, if your potential clients perceive the value of hiring you, all that information that you provide, the services or products you provide, and it costs them very little in relation, comparison to the value, then it's going to be a good decision for them. They will be willing to hand out cash and they won't even think about the money, right? You want to get to that point. A good, um, a good example is a rental car. So I travel around and uh, land and I want to rent my own car or I Uber around, but I want to rent my own car. The, um, I perceive, I choose which car, there's a bunch of cars I could choose. The car that I choose, <clears throat> I'm assuming that the bigger car has more room, has better air conditioning, it's cleaner, it's more comfortable, it's safer, I can carry more stuff in it, um, the seats are more comfortable, it's luxury, I kind of like the look of it, um, all that good, there's probably maybe four wheel drive if I'm going up in the mountains, all that stuff, there's a lot of benefits to getting, for me, me, I'm just giving you an example, me renting a big car compared to a smaller car, midsize or, or a mini car or energy efficient car or something like that, right? That's my perceived value. So I will rent that more expensive car because of the value. The perceived value that I'm getting from that bigger car is worth the money. I put it down all the time. Another one is watches. I don't wear watches. Actually, I don't rent cars very much. Um, there's a um, I don't know if you know, but um, the cost of making, you go to uh, a store, let's say Macy's is in my neighborhood. I go to Macy's and I go to the men's jewelry or whatever, watches. I don't wear watches, but there's cases there of watches. There's a hundred watches. They all look really beautiful, right? Um, 
and they're all priced differently. They all look kind of like the same and tells you the time, but there are features on each one that are different. Well, the cost of making any of them is about the same. So it, it costs a certain amount of money to make any watch. I don't care if it has, if it's small, big, uh, surrounded by jewels, um, has a bunch of features, bunch of hands, digital, analog, I don't care what country it's from, it costs about the same to make actually nowadays. So that's the truth. But some of these watches are for a thousand dollars and some of them are for 10 bucks. The difference is the perceived value of that watch. It's going to tell me the time, but there's got to be other things about it, right? That would, would, um, have that would attract a client to purchase that $1,000 watch. Those are pretty good examples about what you need to think about. If the perceived value is greater than the cost, then it's going to be a good decision. And it works for your potential clients as well as you. So if you're thinking about your business, you have to overwhelm your potential clients with the value of hiring you so that the cost of hiring you is minimal in comparison. It works for you as a business owner as well. So if the perceived value, if the value of what you get from Internachi is, is much greater than the cost, monthly membership fee, then it's a pretty good decision, pretty good business decision. Here's, here's a decision that you may say. So I've got a bunch of things on my table over here. I'll try to get to some of them. Uh, let me do this one. here. So this is my home inspection report. This is what I used to do. I put it in a binder. I put my home inspection report in a binder. I printed it on site in the kitchen. Crazy fast printer. Printed it um, in black and white because color ink is nuts. But I did this in only a few minutes on punched paper. And um, I put it in a binder, a three ring binder. And um, so this costed a, a lot. I think it was less than a dollar or dollar, something like that. Printing costed, I forget actually how much printing costs. Let's just say a dollar, right? Dollar, dollar, two bucks cost. This home maintenance book, which um, helps me um, convey information without saying it, without wasting my time during a home inspection. I want to be efficient and fast, but I want to be really comprehensive. So I, I provide a home maintenance book to all of my clients. And this is $2.70 from Internachi. And you can get customized ones too. I'll show you a pile over here. So that's what? A dollar, dollar, and three dollars. That's five bucks. And there's a bunch of free stuff you can get. Like, or I don't know if it's free, but it could be a dollar. Maybe a penny each or something like that. So this is, um, if I'm doing an inspection on Saturday, right? Um, and kids come, they can have a, a coloring and activity book. So I put that in there. And then uh, there's some other things like rack cards, you know, a couple pennies. So um, the perceived value of this, when I give this to my client, right, it adds physical weight, is greater than the cost, is greater than five bucks because they think they got something amazing. And they did. This is amazing. This is an amazing amount of information in here. It's all printed out, beautiful report. They'll also get it electronically too, because I like to put videos in my reports so they can download the report um, from the cloud. And they get all this other information as well. And this costs $5, let's say. Well, I'm not gonna pay for it. It's not gonna cost me actually anything because I'm going to raise my inspection fee by five bucks, maybe six, and have my client buy their own stuff and a cup of coffee for me. So if the perceived value is greater than the cost, here's another one. Here's the perceived value. Here's um, a field guide for home inspectors. Now, if I find termites, right, I can go to my client and say, we have termites. And they'll be like, well, I saw a bunch of flies outside with long wings. And I say, well, did it look like this? So, yep, it looked just like that. And did the damage, did the bug, or the damage, 
did it look like this? Yep, this is a field guide. So I can identify anything that damages wood. Was the damage like this? Yeah, that was it. Okay, so what we've got is dry wood termites. The cost of this is, uh, I think it's 50 bucks or 40 bucks. But the value, the perceived value of my client hiring an inspector who uses a field guide is priceless. This is amazing. This is incredibly valuable. Imagine your client going to work with this and sharing it with their coworkers. Um, the cost of getting a customized home maintenance book, customized to your home inspection business. We customize home maintenance books and they cost the same, $2.70. I like this because you can put a picture of yourself on the back with a dog, which is a great idea. Put dogs and cats in your inspection brand. And I, I like this picture, it's a great picture. Nice shot, right? Um, this one's pretty funny because these guys are, it's, they would be great competitors. Grand Mountain, because on the back of their home maintenance book, there's cherry pickers. So they inspect the roof with equipment, heavy equipment. That, that is amazing if they do that, man, to get up on the roof uh, without touching it um, using cherry pickers. So all of these customized home maintenance books, um, we do. We design and print. Uh, all the design work is free from InterNACHI. You have a marketing team at InterNACHI that works for you. The perceived value of this customized home maintenance book is much greater than the cost. And if that's true, then it's a good decision. Keep that in mind. Because your home inspection service could end up, it's really a commodity. You should look up the term what commodity is. Look up the term. I'll tell you what it is. It is similar to other inspections, right? If you get a dozen inspectors and you ask them about their service, they're going to say just about the same thing because they haven't put any thought into their brand and why they're better than the other person, right? So a commodity is very similar. It's interchangeable. You can hire one inspector or the next inspector. It doesn't matter. What they say is very repetitive, right, from one to the other. You don't want to be in that world of commodity. I mean, there might be a slight change, like one may be in a license state, the other might not be. But it's essentially uniform throughout the market, regardless of where you're from. And when you do that, when you're in that world of offering the same thing, your profit margin is very low. You're at the bottom end. It's kind of what happens in some licensed states, like Florida and Texas. There are a lot of inspectors who are charging same inspection as everybody else, and the only difference between all of them is price. When everything else is the same, what else does a potential client look at? Price. And they tend to charge, they tend to hire what costs less, right? So you have to think about what makes you different from all the rest. While everyone else is living in the commodity market, what pulls you out of that? What makes you um, not repetitive, not interchangeable, different, special? What makes you stand out in the crowd? So in my business, it was infrared. I don't know why, it just worked. You could try a bunch of things. Internet actually offers a lot of services and products, a lot of strategies. You gotta pick and choose. Out of a hundred things we offer, maybe two or three or five will work for you. Infrared worked for me. I bought an infrared camera when it was new on the market, right? So bought an infrared camera and I was the, I didn't charge for it. I didn't charge $150 and try to, you know, charge just for that. I incorporated it into my home inspection service because I knew that by adding that value, I could charge more. So I became the home inspector who did free infrared scans with my infrared camera. There it is, with my infrared camera. And um, that 
perceived value was much greater than the cost that my clients paid, right? The value of hiring a home inspector who did free thermal scans during the same home inspection, yeah, that is worth it. And I put this on my website for my clients, my potential clients to look at. You are seeing this, that's a ceiling of a bedroom next to a window. Other inspectors, all other inspectors around me see the same thing. But here's what I see, because I include infrared scans with every inspection. I use my infrared camera on every inspection. Why would you hire an inspector who sees what you see, right? Uh, here's my C2. I love this little guy. Fits in your pocket. A FLIR C2. Sorry, I have my dark shirt. A FLIR C2. And um, really nice infrared camera. Durable. Um, and before you buy, so it's only a few hundred dollars. Uh, the difference between this camera and my other camera, which is $5,000, um, the difference is about 4500 For me, personally, the, the real difference is that, right? It's, it, they, they each will help a home inspector do better inspections, right, in their own ways. One has higher resolution than the other. There's a bunch of differences, but um, technical differences. But um, in relation to marketing, the difference is thousands of dollars. So I'd go with this fella, this little guy. Um, it's quick and easy and affordable, and I'll show you where to get one if you wanted one. But before you pick up an infrared camera, you have to get trained. And we have training and certification, and it's online at natchi.org forward slash IR. Natchi.org slash IR. IT hates it when I say forward slash. Natchi.org slash IR is where you can become trained and certified using infrared. Any infrared camera. This training isn't specific to a particular really expensive infrared camera, right? You can use this FLIR C2 on any home inspection and do a better job. And the training is online, free, learn at your own pace, free for members, and the certification, um, examinations, training, logo, um, is free to members as well. You have to get trained in order to interpret what your infrared camera is showing you, because you, can, you don't want to make terrible mistakes um, using a tool. But think of it as, don't get scared, think of an infrared camera as um, a flashlight. So standards of practice does not require me to use a uh, flashlight, um, some would argue that using a flashlight during a home inspection is going beyond the standards of practice because it's not listed. The word flashlight is not in the standards of practice at all. Um, so think of it as like using a flashlight allows me to see things that I wouldn't normally be able to see without it, right? So I really can't see what's going on in that corner, but my flashlight, well, I can see everything. I can see a lot of things. Maybe not everything, but a heck of a lot more. Same thing with an infrared. Now, using an infrared camera allows me to see things that I wouldn't normally be able to see without it. Can't really see everything, but I can see a lot more with it. And if I can see a lot more in my visual inspection, that means I'm a better inspector. So don't freak out about infrared. Why am I talking about infrared? Because this is probably my best example of how I killed it in the market. I found something that works and differentiated myself from all of my competition. A lot of my competition thought it was stupid to use infrared. Well, they just sat at home watching TV, like we said before, right? While I built my company. I wanted to stand out from all the crowd because if you don't, then you are a commodity, man. You're, you're interchangeable with anybody else. And if you are different, it's only because of price and they're gonna pick the cheapest one. So don't do that. Don't live in the world of commodity. You have to figure out what works for you. And I wanted to show you that infrared worked for me. And you can still do it. Here's an exercise that's part of the home uh, inspection business course that I referred to before. Do it right now. See if you can list three areas in which your company is the best and why. Don't just tell me oh, I'm the best at writing reports. Tell me why. I'm the best at finding moisture. Tell me why. 
Why are you the best? Why, give me three things that you're really good at. Or just tell me three special things about your company, something that no one else does. No one, because if you're saying things in your marketing that everyone else is saying, right? That's that commodity thing. That's the, you don't want to be like everyone else, right? You want to say things in your marketing that no one else is saying. Everyone is saying, I'll give you an example of what everyone else is saying. Everyone is saying that um, um, they're a member of something. So don't promote InternetG or other organizations that you're a member of something. Say specifically what you're trained and certified in or what experience you have because your experience is probably different from others, right? Um, I perform thorough, thorough inspections. Everyone does. I write my inspection reports using a computer. Everyone does. I take digital pictures. Everyone does. Don't say these things. Say something special. It's really hard. It's a great mental exercise. If you can't do it, then you're probably going to be left behind a little bit because I've got my elevator speech ready. I've got my different points, my unique selling points, my brand ready, and it's out there with my marketing. That message of why I'm better than you and I'm actually the best in the crowd, I've, I'm, I'll show you what it is, right? So. This is not my home inspection company. Um, this is, I use this website, bigbeninspections.com, bigbeninspections.com, because um, uh, I, I'm no longer a home inspector, I just train home inspectors. But I was a home inspector, as I said before. So when you land on my website, I know what you're looking for, right? Um, I don't have to explain what a home inspection is. We're beyond that. The people landing on your site, they know what a home, they are convinced already that they have to hire a home inspector. What they need is the best one. So the looking for an inspector, yes, it's always yes. I'm giving them that opportunity to just say yes, of course, yes, now what? Find out why I'm the best. You click that button. So that's my punch in the face, right? Um, marketing isn't like, a, uh, a long-term strategy for convincing someone, right? Like in boxing, my brother used to box. Boxing matches take a really long time. The strategy is to last a long time, right? If you can knock them out in the first round, great, but you really have to survive. Um, in marketing, you get one punch, really, maybe two. You get one or two, three seconds on your website to make your point. Otherwise, I'm clicking somewhere else, right? I am not going to read text, not a lot of text. You give me a few words, it's gonna be a third of a tweet, something. Quick, easy, tell me what I'm looking for. Are you looking for an inspector? Yes, you wanna find out why I'm the best? Yeah, boom, I performed over 10,000 inspections and I've been around for a long time. And I'm certified, I got these certifications. And this one here says, I teach other inspectors. Why would you hire my student? You might as well hire the professor, right? And then here's a list of all my certifications. Here's a me on a here's me on a ladder, a picture of me on a ladder because I bring tall ladders to every inspection. If your home inspector is in a, a Prius, right, with no ladders, right, you could hire them. Yep, that might fit your needs. But my clients are looking for someone who's going to get up on the roof, and I exceeded the standards of practice every time. We can talk about that in other home inspection classes about walking upon roofs. You're not required to walk upon any roof. And also use infrared on every inspection. And here's all my certifications. It just scrolls and scrolls and scrolls forever. I'm gonna beat you. There's no words, just images of all of my inspections. I'm even a certified tree inspector. Where do you get those certifications? InternetGee. Um, services and fees. My inspections are backed by a guarantee. It's the buy back your home guarantee, which is provided by InternetG, through InternetG. Um, my qualifications, you already saw, infrared inspection. I use infrared on every inspection. I pulled that thing out on every inspection. My camera helps me see things that other inspectors can't. That's why I use an infrared on every inspection. And also my home energy scores. I do a home energy score, an energy inspection, 
on every home inspection. The data that I'm collecting, about 40 pieces of data related to home energy efficiencies, I'm already collecting during my typical home inspection. I might as well get a little bit of training and certification in home energy, right? About insulation and air sealing and programmable thermostats and sealing the ducts and insulating them and you know, all that other stuff. So I can provide a report that helps my client save money. So the amount of money that they save every year costs a heck of a lot less than what I charge them once for. That information that I provide, I'm like the source, expert source, library of information customized to their home's condition. I teach my clients how their home is operated, how to operate their home, how to maintain it, and how to save energy. And I'm the one in the neighborhood that they go to. And there are a ton of benefits that come from hiring me. One of them is you actually save money. $1,200 every year. $1,200, that's um, a nice weekend vacation for my family of five. That's pretty good. I'm hiring that person. I authored, think about differentiation, right? I'm not a commodity. You think I'm a commodity? I authored a home maintenance book, and I give that home maintenance book for free to all of my clients. <laughs> It's free, you don't have to buy, I'm not selling you this. I'm letting you have it. It's included with my inspection and it's free. Actually, it's not free, right? The more value I add, add to my service, the more I increase my fee. This doesn't cost me as a business owner anything. I'm allowing my clients to purchase their own home maintenance books. I'm allowing my clients to purchase their own report binders. You can get this from Inspector Outlet and a cup of coffee. The more value you pile on to your inspection service, the more you can bump up that fee, the more you can demand. Think of the rental car that we talked about yesterday. I'm the big luxury rental car and I demand a bigger service. Why? Because I provide incredible value for renting me. I'm the big watch in the case for a thousand bucks. You know why? Because I offer more than all my other watches. All the other watches around me tell time, but not like me, baby. I provide you with a ton of value, extra value. You're going to look beautiful on a date wearing my watch. You're going to be stunning. People are going to come up to you and ask you, where'd you get that watch? Because I'm the watchmaker, right? It's worth it. If the perceived value is greater than the cost, then it's a good decision for your client to hire you. That's where you want to think about. Blah, 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 blah. You want to think about that. How do you add value? If you're telling me that you perform a good inspection, <laughs> you just stay back behind me. Everyone performs a good inspection. What is the real reason why I should hire you? Right? I authored a home maintenance book. Why don't you author something? Something you know about. I authored a hmm and I provide it with every inspection. I don't know, you have to think. You have to think what makes you different from all the rest. As a business owner, and if you think you're just a home inspector, that's why home inspectors get stuck. They think, they don't think of themselves as an owner operator of a, a business. They think of themselves as a home inspector, right? And they don't last very long. You have to think of value and charge for the, for the charge accordingly to the value that you provide. Which brings me to my, my uh, Pablo Picasso story. So the story is Pablo Picasso is sitting in a cafe and a woman in New York, and a woman comes by and um, asks Pablo, or she recognizes Pablo Picasso, and she's so excited, and asks Pablo Picasso, please draw a sketch of me. I'll stand here and you draw a sketch of me. And she gets a napkin, and Pablo Picasso, well, a little hesitant, you know, goes, all right, man, I'm, you know, it's a Spanish one. Sketches something, and it takes him only a few seconds. The guy's a master, right? And he slides over the sketch of the woman. And um, she looks at it and says, oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you so much. And she grabs the napkin and starts taking it away. And Pablo Picasso grabs the napkin out of her hand. And goes, um, 
Madam, that'll be ten thousand dollars. <laughs> the lady goes, well, ten thousand dollars. I'm not buying that piece of whatever for ten thousand dollars. You know, it only took you thirty seconds to draw. And Pablo Picasso goes, it didn't take me thirty seconds to draw. It took me fifty years to draw that. If you are doing inspections for a long time, you're going to start to build your knowledge and skills and also the value that you provide. And as you go along, it may not be this in the beginning, but as you go along, you're going to raise your fees according to the value of your services that you provide. You always have to think of the value, the perceived value, the value that is perceived by your potential clients. Because it's just a rental car, it's going to take me from point A to point B, but somebody's charging 10 times more. It's just a watch. They all cost the same to build that watch, but someone's selling a watch for a thousand bucks. Perceived value, right? Um, let's, uh, I tend to talk and ramble on, so let me look. Look for um, um, questions. Try to show what you offer, facility growth, how about this women? How does it make your own? Smash the time killers. I don't know what that is. There's so much information the internet you offers. How long did it take you to start knowing everything to inspect and how to inspect it? How long to retain all that info? You can be technically competent in about uh, three to four weeks. If you have minimum skills, minimum knowledge, if you live in a home, right, then you, you already are in a good, <laughs> if you live in a tent all your life, you know, but if you live in a home, you know how the home works kind of, you know, you can identify components and systems, which is a lot about home inspections. But um, it takes a few weeks because, and that's, that's hard full-time studying, middle of the night, drinking coffee, staying up, and pounding through the uh, online courses that InterNACHI provides and watching videos. One of the best things you could do to gauge yourself is to follow along with a, um, a certified inspector performing an inspection and follow along. If you can do it live, you can actually meet someone who's an inspector and um, say that I'll carry your tools or something and be your helper all day if I can just tag along. I'll buy you lunch and um, uh, maybe you can find somebody like that, right, to do it live. If you can't do it live, I just go to Nachi TV, bottom corner, N-A-C-H-I dot TV. Go there now. Click the home inspection tab and there's a bunch of videos of me and other inspectors doing inspections and follow along. Um, you can register for the next class. There's a home inspection class on Nachi TV, N-A-C-H-I dot TV. It's free and online. It's going to be live, just like this class. You may be watching this on YouTube, but this class is live right now. And you can ask questions as we perform an inspection as you go along, right? So the knowledge is there and it's online. Then you have to start to apply it and imagine yourself doing an inspection. So I would download a checklist. Internet she has a ton of checklists. One of them, one of the most important ones is um, the basic home inspection checklist where you literally check what you're inspecting. Check, 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 check. I inspected this, I inspected that. Download that checklist, it's free. And inspect the house that you're living in, right? Inspect it and then inspect, um, inspect it 10 times and inspect your neighbor's house. Tell them what you're doing. Introduce yourself. You know, I'm learning to do, be your neighborhood home inspector. You know, I'm gonna learn how to inspect all of your homes in your neighborhood. And I'm gonna inspect all, I'm gonna, I'd like to come back next year and inspect your home and see if we can keep it maintained really well because I'll know a lot more. So in exchange, can I inspect this home and practice? You know, and practice in doing inspections and then come back to Natchi TV, watch some videos, come back to InterNACHI, Take some more courses. Find a local chapter, internet chapter, bump elbows with some friendly competitors in the future, ask them questions. Go to a convention. We have one in Texas uh, in two days. Uh, a couple hundred inspections. Uh, inspectors will be there in Texas. Talking about the hurricane cleanup, FEMA inspections, 
diversifying your services, some continuing education. Uh, we have, um, in 2018, we'll be on the East Coast with the um, Inspection Universe. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities to learn, but eventually you're going to have to um, take the risk of performing an inspection on your own and make it real. Ask people for $300 or whatever your price is um, and actually do a home inspection. You're going to have to take that risk. That's what the point of being in business is, to um, take upon all the risk that being in business entails, but being rewarded with all that benefit of taking those risks. So I would use InterNACHI like crazy. Just take advantage of all the free stuff that InterNACHI provides. And man, there's a ton. We can show you the link. Coming up, I'll show you the link where you can get all of it. And it's free for members. And you can pay $49 a month, cancel anytime. If you want to try InterNACHI out, if you're totally new, you don't know what InterNACHI is, $49 an entire month, you have access to everything that everyone else has access to. Everything. And take a look. And see if we have all of the resources you need to be a successful business owner. Mm, I hope I answered that question. Thanks, Tyler. Most important thing to figure out is how to add value to your service. That's right, Arturo. That's a nice name. Um, love the binder idea. Okay, Cal. Is the literature available in French? We have a lot available in French. Um, the home maintenance book is being translated in French. Um, we have this one. This is our standard home maintenance book. It's in English. Full color, in and out. Um, we have this one for Florida, so you won't find any um, basements or uh, oil-fired boilers in this book. It's all about Florida-specific stuff. And um, we have one in Spanish. And we're coming out with um, one in French. And we have articles and training and courses and exams in French as well, um, Canadian French. Um, so thanks, Christian. Uh, do you discuss, can you discuss preferred report software? Yeah, I love it, Sven. Um, Sven asks about software. Uh, we're coming up on it. Um, but Home Inspector Pro and Home Gauge. Those are my two favorites. Home Gauge is PC. I'm not a PC guy. <laughs> Home Inspector Pro works on both PC and um, Apple products. And Apple products, I have, where's my phone? Here's my iPhone. And I've got Home Inspector Pro. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it because of the, the camera and the, and the glare. Well, um, it works on an iPhone, right? And it's mobile. And it works on my iPhone, and you can write reports using your finger, and I don't, I don't type. So you can just talk your narrative comments into the report software, and it converts it into text. You say period, and it turns it into a period. Yeah. There's a hole in the roof, period. Correction and further evaluation by a professional roofer is recommended, period. And that text goes into your report, and you take a picture, and that picture goes right next to that narrative that you just spoke into the section that you're in, in your checklist. This is amazing. You click a button, and it uploads it to the cloud. At any time, your client can download it, but they have a username and password, and you can see when they download it. And they can't download it until they pay and sign their agreement. If you're not using mobile software, uh, member differentiation? Remember commodity? Everyone uses software, right? But I use mobile software that incorporates pictures and video, and it's downloadable from the cloud. That's fancy. That's my brand. That's who I am. That's why I'm going to beat you in the market. You have to spy on me. Visit my website and see if I was your competitor. I'm not your competitor because I don't do home inspections. But spy on your competitors, right? Use Inspector Seek. Two E's, inspectorseek.com. Type in your zip code, inspire on your friendly competitors, and see what they're doing, and see if you can beat them. So, good question, Sven. Uh, any plans to translate Homeinus book into Chinese? Hey, Russ, if you know, 
Chinese, I'm all for it, man. I, it's actually more difficult than you think. So um, yeah, we can talk about it. Just email me. I'm looking for all kinds of translations. I'm actually looking for ambassadors. So if you have um, home inspection companies in China, I'm going to support you like crazy, right? Because I'd love to visit uh, the Red Square. Uh, $49 a month, unlimited. John asked $49 a month, unlimited. It's $49 a month. Like you can renew and keep going, or you can stop at any time, cancel any time, because you've had enough. Like that's, that's not me. But I would try it. For $49, you join in energy as a member, and as a member, you have access to everything. When you become a member of Internet, she, a door of opportunity opens up. It's just incredible. We overwhelm you. It's the whole value cost thing, right? We overwhelm you. Internet she overwhelms you with incredible value. You have all these membership benefits, all this free stuff, all the free online training. You have access to our marketing department, access to our education department, member services department, our training classes. Yep. It's incredible. Uh, thoughts on Spectora? I don't know it. Uh, palm Tech? I don't know it. Sounds like uh, fits in your palm. Home inspection, state home inspection. Okay, got it. Thanks. Hold on, inspection. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going, right? Are you guys and ladies good? Shall we keep going? I have a few more slides. Why should I hire you? Seriously, like if I asked you that question, could you answer it? Like, why should I hire you? Well, I teach my neighbors how to operate their home, how to maintain it, and how to save home, home energy. Because a home, I believe that a home inspection is part of a homeowner's routine maintenance plan. And when you're in that plan, I'm going to tell you the condition of the home, especially when you're just about to buy it. And then I'm going to come back every year and make sure we maintain that home so that it's comfortable and it's working properly. And if there's any problems developing, we're going to get on it. Now, I just made that up, right? I really did. Like, that's pretty good elevator speech. That's pretty cool. You know, it's, it doesn't have to, anything to do with the real estate transaction, you know? It has something that's kind of like a broader scope, brings in my neighborhood and things like that. Why should I hire you? Well, specifically, why you should hire me is I performed 10,000 home inspections since 1996. I include infrared scans on every home inspection for free, and I'll get up on your roof. I don't care how tall it is. I bring a 40-foot aluminum ladder, and I'll get up there. I don't know. Those are three good things, right? Why should I hire you? Try to answer that question. It's a really good mental exercise about your business and about your brand. Another thing to do is think about ancillary inspections. Here's where we start to talk about profit. Because an ancillary inspection is a great opportunity to um, add money, right, to your service that you've already performed. I hate it when I do only a home inspection. I go to a job, I want to do something more than just a home inspection. $396 is what I base price charge for a home inspection, $396. I had a, I add a home maintenance book, had a home maintenance uh, newsletter. I add infrared scan. I add all this other stuff, right? All this perceived value is greater than the cost stuff. But to really crank up the, let's call it gross revenue. It's really net profit because I don't spend more time in doing it. But to crank up the revenue, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to do additional services. So while I'm doing a home inspection, if I have not yet scheduled, 75% um, of all of my home inspections included a radon. And that's um, not climate-based, but geographical. Um, for example, in Colorado, that was in Pennsylvania. In Colorado, one out of two homes have elevated levels of radon. So if you're a home inspector and you're just offering home inspections, I'm going to kill you because uh, I've, I've package ancillary services with my home inspection. So 75% of my home inspections were with radon. Um, 50 were with um, wood destroying organism inspections and about 25% was water quality. Um, very small percent, like five, three, four, five percent were um, lead hazard risk assessments. That was a lot of fun. But if I'm at a job 
and let's say I'm just doing a home inspection. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to schedule or sell uh, ancillary service. Um, and I'm down here looking at uh, the basement and it's kind of moldy or something. If I can't remember what to say, I can look at this card that InterNACHI um, provides from our marketing department for members. It says, you know, uh, you should let me inspect your home for mold. Why? Oh, because mold damages what it grows on, and the longer it grows, the more damage it can cause. Really? Yeah. Here. While I'm here doing the home inspection, um, I'll let you read this. And it's a flyer that helps you sell ancillary inspections, right? If you don't know what to say, let InterNACHI's marketing say it for you. So let me send this one. You know what? You can't see, smell, or taste radon, but it may be a problem in your home. Let me test your home for radon. That's great. While you're while I'm here, you know, while I'm here, it's not going to take any more of my time. But while I'm here, I might as well do a home energy inspection because I've seen a couple areas where if you just invest a little bit of money, like air sealing and insulating and air sealing and insulating this ductwork, um, your home will be more comfortable. You'll burn less fossil fuels and um, you'll save energy. It'll be an investment, but the payback might be really quick, you know, you can save money. Typically I, I save my clients after doing a home, a home energy inspection about a thousand bucks a year if they follow my recommendations. It's an extra thousand dollars. How would you like an extra thousand dollars right now? If I give you a thousand bucks, would you take it? Yeah, so that's the kind of stuff, information I can provide you while I'm here. Right, ancillary services. If you, uh, you know, there's, um, there's also the thing about, um, Oh, let me just follow. Let me just start with. There's so much information I want to provide, but I can't remember how to provide it in a nice orderly way. So I'm here and there. So here's a, a free book called Stacks. It's an inspector's guide to increasing gross revenue. Inside, there's a story about um, lemonade and umbrellas. You're sitting in a park, and it's really hot, and there's two stands in the park. Lemonade stand and umbrella stand. And when it's hot in the park, right, lemonade stand is kicking it. No one's selling umbrellas. But the sun goes away and the clouds come and the park starts to get a little wet because it starts to rain. Now the folks who cooled off in the sun getting lemonade are now in the line for an umbrella. So just because it's a commodity, Lemonades are lemonades, and umbrellas are umbrellas, right? Uh, mold inspection is just a mold inspection, and a radon test is just a radon test. Same thing, it's, they're interchangeable. But it's sometimes, um, if you pitch it just at the right time, it's yours, right? It's your opportunity to increase your gross revenue, increase your net profit while you're there. Anything you can do for money, Without spending more time, it's like profit, think of it. So um, I wanted to spend three hours during an inspection and gross as much revenue as possible. Because I know my profit margin is in there. So if my gross is high, then my percentage, um, which is 20%, it's factors in to more money. 20% of a $400 thing is not, not too much, but 20% of a thousand, dollar inspection, because I have ancillary inspections, that's what I want to hit. That's really good profit. So how do you offer ancillary services? You have to get trained and certified to offer them. And you go to nachi.org forward slash certification. And InterNACHI provides members, free and online, over 45 additional inspector certifications. Two steps, you got to join InterNACHI, and then you got to be certified <laughs> just choose what you want to be. Um, certified home inspector is our main one, right? That's the top one, CPI. And then there's 11th month warranty inspections, home energy inspector, pool and spa inspection certification, um, home energy score assessor, HVAC inspector certification, roof inspector, indoor air quality, um, mold inspector, these additional certifications, 
is the foundation of offering ancillary services that work in your market. And then you go to natchee.org slash ancillary and you update your profile. Every member has a members only profile. Every member of InterNACHI that joins InterNACHI gets a members only profile and you log into your profile and it's the portal through which you access all of the membership benefits and services and products. And one of them is you have to update your profile to tell people the ancillary services that you provide. So while they're searching on the internet, we have this huge net, like a, we capture people looking for you. We capture them like a fish and send them down the chute right to you. But you have to tell them through our portal what ancillary services you provide. So get trained and certified on ancillary services. And Steve Jobs said that it's not what, it's not your client's job to know what they want. That's your job. So when you're inspecting down in the basement and you smell that musty smell, you see a sump pump that's not working, you see efflorescence on the walls, your moisture meter is reading a little high on the carpet, you may want to offer an ancillary service like a moisture and intrusion inspection or an infrared scan or a mold test. Uh, if you're interested in franchises, great option, um, but you may want to compare the benefits between InterNACHI, what InterNACHI provides, and what a franchise provides. So I copy um, pasted some information off the internet about some franchises, and um, the one thing you need if you are interested in a franchise is money. Um, so if you're starting out and you've got about 40 grand to blow, this is a pretty good option for you. There's a franchise fee of $18,000. You need to pay for traveling and training in order to operate within their franchise program. You need computers and tools according to the franchise, um, which is incorrect. Well, you don't even need to travel for training, right? Because InterNACHI provides you for training. Oh, the franchise fee, there's a membership fee for InterNACHI is 49 bucks. Computers and tools, you really don't need a lot of computers. You, um, you can get a tablet for a couple hundred bucks. And tools, um, you need a flashlight, okay? Forget about infrared. You need a flashlight. I'll tell you what the essential tools are. Uh, you need a, a voltage leak tester. So this is from uh, an inspector outlet, an outlet store called inspectoroutlet.com. You need a voltage tester so that you don't touch any wires that are alive, like a safety thing. And you need your GFCI tester. GFCI tester, right? You can get this at inspectoroutlet.com. Um, you can get it also at a hardware store, but I'm telling you to get it at inspectoroutlet.com because you can get it um, at a really good price, packaged, because you're a member of Internet. So you do a drop down, and that's about all you need, really. I mean, I've got other things in my tool bag, um, like you know, a protective cloth, so that I can get into the attic without getting insulation all over the place, and crawl gear gloves. But that's basically my, my tool bag. Looks like this. It's got a pockets and stuff. And I like this one because it has InterNACHI on it. So you can get this tool bag from inspectoroutlet.com. But you really need a flashlight, voltage tester, GFCI tester, and a, a mobile device, a tablet of some kind. You know, you already have your phone. So, you know, you got that. And you need a computer. A tablet would work, so um, maybe a couple hundred bucks at most. Uh, not not several thousand. There's some kind of marketing pro program fee. Well, I'll show you where you can get a team of mark um, a marketing team to work for you, absolutely free. Um, office setup, insurance, accounting. We have um, we work with a, an insurance company that can help you out. We have legal services. Um, our legal counsel is available. Uh, the off, his office is in InterNACHI's headquarters. Uh, conference and chapter meetings. Um, at InterNACHI headquarters, I know we've hosted many um, large conferences, three-day events. Um, they're not $700. They're free. 
a royalty of gross revenue and brand advertising, 4% of gross revenue. So gross revenue, they're taking, uh, this franchise is, is, is saying that um, it's worth this to you to take the top 11% of your gross revenue. It's not your net, it's your gross revenue, right? Gross revenue, not a, it's not a small percentage of your net, it's gross. Well, if, if you're gross, your gross includes your profit margin. So 20% is a reasonable profit margin. So 20%, they're taking 11% of that. They're taking the majority of your profit to be in a franchise. That may work for you. That sounds like a good deal for you. Man, I highly recommend the franchise then, especially uh, if I was a, a competitor of yours, right? I'd absolutely promote a franchise to you at a chapter meeting. Internachi is pretty good because I want you to compare what a typical franchise offers and the costs involved and what Internachi offers. And these two URLs are critically important to figure out the pros and cons of franchise and, and Internachi. And again, I would recommend a franchise in certain situations. Um, Natchi.org forward slash benefits. If we go there, if my internet is still working, Here's the ben benefits page. Inspector membership benefits and competitive advantages. Um, there's certifications, there's home inspector certifications and the additional certifications, the ancillary ones. There's um, business books, there's stacks, I already showed you that. There's also sleep well, a home inspector's guide to managing risk, that's free. There's that bizvelop tool and there's the free online home inspection training and continuing education. As we scroll down, hundreds of courses, thousands of hours, videos and courses and exams. Uh, free inspection business success tools like um, the fee uh, online inspection agreement, the agreement between you and your client. You have to get that signed before you even step on the property. That agreement system is free. Uh, it's online. It's really a fantastic system. We have a fee calculator so that you can calculate your fees. What do you charge? Oh, this is kind of fun. So here's my base, right? My base price is $300. Um, I don't charge for miles, but I could. I don't charge for age. I don't charge for size, but I could. But let's just say um, I drive 10 miles. Oops. Come on, fingers. Ten, oh, 10 miles. Uh, how old's the home? 15 years. How large is the home? 2,500 square feet. Um, and how busy are you? Well, you click the calculate and it's 300. That's what I charge is my base price. But let's say you, um, your business is dead. What would you charge? Well, you would charge less because you're not in demand right now. Your marketing, remember the purpose of marketing is not fill your calendar, but to have it overflowing so that there's more customers than you can possibly serve. That's demand, right? And when you have demand then you can demand higher prices. When you're not in demand, you have to adjust. So let's say I'm in demand. I'm completely swamped. What would you guess? If my base is 300, what would you guess a reasonable charge would be for my home inspection that is in demand? 390. And that's me not charging for mileage, age, or, or, um, or uh, size, right? So if I factored in those things, this is a great tool for your scheduler your office manager, someone who's, who is answering the phone. Um, you can do this on your phone. You can do this on a piece of paper. You can calculate these things, right? So that you calculate profit for every inspection that you do. You incorporate certain factors. If you want to charge for long distance, well, it's right there. So that when you give somebody a price, you are confident that you're not wasting your time going out doing a ton of inspections for a fee that is working against you, that is not creating profit. You have to factor out, I don't know what, what you want to do. Do you want to charge for age, size? We did, we charged for anything that was over 4,000 square feet. We spent more time there, so we charged more, right? So we would have that factor. You have to think about, it isn't just a $125 home inspection, right? 
That's what they're doing down in Florida. Two hour, $125 home inspection. It's crazy because they are just commoditized like crazy down there. You don't want to get into that world. And you want to be able to charge fees that make sense for um, that focus on net profit. The other URL in order to compare what a franchise offers to what Internachi offers is nachi.org slash everything. And on this page, it's a pretty neat page, we kind of chunk it down to 15 steps. The first step is obviously join Internachi. Second step is to get certified. Third step is to go through your portal, your online members only uh, account through, you can, through which you can access everything. And then you take the business course and then you start to work on your branding and marketing and it just goes on and on and on and on. Even has resources for building your own website. And then use those two things to um, kind of uh, compare the pros and cons of franchise versus Internachi and then the cost. So it's $49 a month, cancel any time, or $499 a year. You want to focus on net profits. You want to focus on net profits, not really gross, because it doesn't matter that you're making a certain amount of money. Like you can say, oh, I made a hundred thousand, my company did $250,000. This, we grossed $500,000. I don't care. That doesn't tell me anything. You can have a ton of money coming in. What is your net profit? And Internet she helps members make money, net profit, and save money by offering free stuff. So remember, the purpose of marketing is to turn down work, not to keep busy, not to work really hard, not to focus on gross revenue, but to focus on increasing your profit margins. So how do you calculate profit margins? How do you actually calculate what you should be charging for your home inspection? Well, we've got the answer. It's the Home Inspection Business Course, and it's Chapter 11. So you log into the Home Inspection Business Course, and you go to Chapter 11, and it talks about... Uh, oh, no, that's branding. Calculate. Chapter 11. Oh, I was in the wrong chapter. Chapter 11. Calculating pricing and billing. And where is that... There it is. So you probably can't see it, but it's this line here. So it's actually a calculation. This is a very basic, simple math calculation that um, provides you the opportunity to think about what to charge so that when that phone rings, you know that it's profit. You don't have to guess. You don't have to worry. It relieves, it relieves all that burden of wondering if you should take this job or not. When that phone rings, and they know the price, and you, or you give them the price, profit is factored into that fee. You're not guessing. It almost doesn't matter what your friendly competitors are doing because desired profit, what you should be charging is based upon your desired annual salary. What do you need in order to support your lifestyle? What is your desired annual salary? Well, how much money do you want to make? And then how much overhead do you have? Uh, are you working from an office? What's that? Um, this, these are all the costs um, that uh, you have to pay regardless of whether you do a home inspection this month or not. Right? These are the costs of operating a business. And then your desired annual profit. 20% is a good target. You can divide that by how much you work. Hopefully that denominator, that bottom number on the fraction is really low, right? And then that will um, help you decide how much to charge per inspection so that you can enjoy that net profit. And you also want to put systems in place that market for you while you're sleeping. So an online scheduler on your website is a great example of that. Your website's capturing people, marketing, sending out that brand, that message, and allows people also to schedule, sees your openings in your calendar, and you capture their contact information. You can even capture their credit card to reserve a spot. Don't do things that waste your precious time or send you down the wrong path. Focus things that are towards profit. Ancillary inspections is one of the things that I recommend. Think about 
offering things in addition to your home inspection service. When it's time to grow, especially in the beginning or later on when you're scaling, you can do relationship building, you can pass out candy. Uh, my company was Peach Inspections. I used to go to the local farmer at the right season time, get baskets of peaches and deliver those peaches to offices, small offices that are um, not really attended to. They really appreciate it. And then, you know, stick business cards in the baskets and develop relationships. And my idea was to have 30 real estate agents in good business relationships with, my, with each inspector. And it worked out really well. They closed about 15 to 20 houses a month, those 30 inspect, uh, real estate agents, and uh, my inspectors were busy. And again, risk. Profits are generated from taking risk. And if you can offset the cost of managing that risk, then there's profit there, right? So is the profit greater than the cost of managing the risk? If it is, then it's probably a good decision. So one a way of uh, thinking about taking risk for a home inspector, I just came up with uh, the software, right? It's risky to buy mobile devices, tablets for all of your inspectors, that's thousands of dollars, and then software, and everyone has their own software and all that stuff, and it's a fee about that. And well, what if, what if it all goes bad? What if the software isn't good, or the tablets break down, or something? There's some risk involved, so you have to manage the cost of that, right? Manage that risk. But I, I highly recommend going mobile. So go to Nachi TV, um, N-A-C-H-I dot TV, and you go to the search field and you type in software. And I did a class on um, inspecting a roof system at the InterNACHI House of Horrors in Boulder, Colorado uh, with my mobile device. And I displayed my mobile device screen um, on, the, on the screen there. And I showed you how quick and easy it is to go mobile. So the investment of having all of your inspectors go mobile is probably worth it. So very little risk involved, but you have to think about it, right? Taking risk is part of capturing that profit. So there's profit in going mobile because you essentially go faster. Oh, I think there's a future slide. Yeah. So when you go mobile, you, all of your inspectors are efficient because you combine two things that take an enormous amount of precious time, which is performing the inspection and writing the inspection report. So you put those two things together when you go mobile because you can inspect and write a report at the same time, including pictures, customized comments, and video, and a summary report, and a click of a button, converting it into an email with a PDF that's accessible from the cloud as well with a username and password. I mean, just boop. It's really efficient. And it's fast. You actually inspect faster. So if you have a window for your inspector of a four-hour window, you may be able to reduce it to three and a half or three because that inspector is actually going to inspect faster, just as thorough, if not more thorough, but just faster because they're using a mobile device as a guide for their inspection process as they move through the house. And it reduces liability going mobile because you're following a checklist that tells you what to inspect. So you can't mess up. You mess up when you skip one of those steps. And you don't do that because the software tells you, hey, you didn't check the chimney. Go back and check the chimney. And it standardizes the inspection process for all of your inspectors. So you know you're confident when you delegate this part of your business to someone else to do, <coughs> they're doing it in a standardized way because they're using a mobile software. And for my business, when we went mobile, it was really fancy. I mean, it just looked fancy. That was part of my brand, right? We use fancy technology, infrared cameras, moisture meters, aspectoscopes. So move, using mobile devices that capture video and provide that video in the inspection report, that was kind of fancy. That was part of my brand. And it also, going mobile, in the beginning, when it was just me, really changed my lifestyle. 
it changed literally the way I lived because I was able to spend my evenings with my family. I wasn't sitting like my competitors at their office desk compiling their inspection report and making mistakes because they can't remember what they saw hours before. So go mobile. Uh, let me look. Many questions for reporting. I'm in Longington Lingo speaking ancillary. Upselling is a key to survival. That's pretty good. Uh, what support do you provide to inspection companies that want to sell franchises to their existing of their existing business? Um, probably you want to go to one of our um, online forums and threads and start that thread. Do you suggest telescoping collapsing ladders? Um, I hate the word collapse and ladder in the same sentence, right? Those two things should not be together. Um, because I know that it, you can fall one foot, 12 inches, and break your ankle, right? So collapsing ladders is not a good term for me. So I used solid ladders. If I used a solid ladder, uh, if I used a ladder at all, it's they were always solid. I didn't do this. I've owned them. I've used them, right? And I've just decided I've, I, I experienced both. I know what I'm talking about. And for me personally, the um, it was a safety thing. The the um, the benefit of having something that could carry under your arm wasn't worth the risk. <laughs> so the value, the perceived value of owning a collapsible ladder exceeded the risk involved. I wasn't able to manage that risk. The value just wasn't worth the cost or the risk, right? So it was too risky. So I found value, great value in having something that I thought was more safe and stable, which is a, a solid ladder. And I was able to figure out how to manage that. I, you know, I had a big van, everything was big. Remember the commodity thing with the rental car? I was the big luxury SUV rental car. I had a big van, big ladder rack, big ladders, big, big, big Ben inspections, right? Uh, I got off track. What was it? Uh, audio went in and out. Okay. Uh, how do you justify to a realtor why your prices might be lower or higher than the previous inspector? Why? Um, slide the playhead to the very beginning of this class. Um, Cause that's all we've been talking about, right? Value, right? Um, a lot of inspectors, we, we have a certified home inspector class every month here at InterNACHI headquarters at the InterNACHI school. And um, a lot of the inspectors ask about writing a report and um, making it friendly to the real estate transaction. I never did that, never played that game, um, never pulled any punches. Um, there's hardly anything that I could say to one of my clients that would kill the deal, although that is what um, the real estate community kind of uses a lot that home inspectors kill the deal, right? Because their goal isn't my goal. Their goal, we don't share the same goal. Their goal is really to find the right buyer for the right home and get it to the real, real estate closing. That's not my goal. My goal is to inform my client about the condition of the home so that they can make a smart decision. I think someone else said that, right? That was one of your things. Randall said that, right? Randall, you're right. That's one of the things, that, that's my goal. My goal is to help my neighbor move into their home, right? Without any surprises. I give them a good heads up before they sign on the dotted line about the condition of the home. How to, how's it work, how to maintain it, how to save energy. We had different goals, you know? So when it came down to telling my client about the roof, that had a hole in it, well, I just smiled. I know I'm not gonna kill the deal. I tell them, look, there's a couple things you gotta do. You, you gotta have to know that this roof has a hole in it and the degree of that defect is high because a hole means rainwater that can contribute to other problems in the home. And um, it has to be corrected by a professional. You can't do it yourself. And it's gotta be done pretty soon. And it's gonna cost some money to do it. 
Now you can negotiate all that away. You can try to knock down the price of the home. Um, you can try to fix it yourself. I don't know what your options are, but I'm just telling you what I see. And this is what I see. And basically, at that moment of a home inspection, your client has fallen in love with their dream home. There's hardly anything you can say to kill the deal, even though that's what other people, other professionals criticize us in doing, but it actually doesn't, doesn't work. So don't pull any punches. Tell them the truth. Don't hold back. And um, gosh, I hope, oh, so that was the value that I provide to my clients. And after a while, the real estate agents realized that that is the value that I provide my clients. And I was able to command a higher fee, right? Because I had this overwhelming amount of value. It's the watch thing. If you've been with us during class, it's the watch, right? The cost of making watches is essentially the same. It's a commodity, but some watchmakers can demand a fee that's 10 times more than everybody else. And you have to figure out why and it's value. Uh, yep. Okay. So what did we do that? Inspection. Oh, your inspection report is your best marketing piece. It really is. I should be able to hire you based upon reading your inspection report, right? It's kind of um, like, uh, it's more important than, you know, I don't know. Like we design a lot of things like customized books and, and uh, a leave behind products. Like, you know, you leave this behind, right? And, you know, here's a little gift inside. Thank you for allowing us to inspect your home. Look inside and there's your business card. We really appreciate you. And you open it up and you leave a gift for the seller of the home. That's kind of a neat marketing tool. You know, really affordable. The cost of this is nothing compared to the perceived value of leaving this behind for the seller. They think that's really great. And guess what this, every seller is looking for? A home inspector. Because they're moving too. And usually a seller doesn't move very far. Could be a little bit outside your neighborhood, but hey, I'll take that. Because I have a fee calculator provided by Internet that allows me to factor in mileage. So I know what to charge the seller that allows me to focus on net profit. So it's all, that's kind of fun to be a business owner. Um, so your inspection report is the one thing that you work on every day, just like marketing. Because it is part of your marketing. Um, it's one of the most important pieces of your marketing because this will get, it won't be thrown out. It'll be put on someone's shelf or it'll be passed out to colleagues and they'll read through it. They're not actually reading it. They're kind of like scanning it. So, oh, can you, can you see? Like my report is filled with digital pictures. Digital pictures, digital pictures. Digital, you see that? Digital pictures. This is an actual inspection report. I did this like 10 years ago. I didn't know I was going to share it today. You know? That's why I killed my competitors in the market. Because I provided that value. And going through this, you, could, you probably have all the information that you need to hire me. You can visit my website. It'll say even more. It'll communicate even more of the reasons why you should hire me, why I'm the best. And you should ask yourself that. Why should you be hired? And is your inspection report written to communicate that? Like in my inspection report, there are pictures of me on the roof. There are pictures of me with my hand on things. There are pictures of me inspecting, right? Pictures of me, my hand is in that, pic, in that report a lot, right? So I exceeded the standards of practice not required to, you're not required to walk upon any roof surface. I don't recommend it, but you open up my inspection report, there's my feet on top of the roof. So I wanted to make sure that that brand is sent out through a message. Your brand is who you are and what you do and why you're different from everybody else. Your marketing is um, how you send that message out. And my inspection report was my best marketing piece to send out my brand of why you should be hiring me instead of the other person. Because I step on every roof. I get up there. That's part of my brand. That was, right? I don't recommend it. It's very dangerous. Don't get up on any roofs. 
Saving the best for last, InterNACHI's marketing team essentially doesn't work for InterNACHI. They do not work for InterNACHI. InterNACHI is doing quite well. Um, InterNACHI's marketing team works for members. And all they do all day long is design and illustrate and consult with home inspectors to develop their brand and marketing all day long. So we're really good at it. It would cost you a lot to hire these folks. That's Jessica. Imagine hiring seven people to just work on your marketing of your business. That's a lot of cost, right? But everything that this marketing team does is free for members. All the design work is free. All you do is place an order and we'll design all that stuff for you. And all that design work and editing and proofing is free. Jessica, marketing director on the left. There's Chris, logo designer. There's Kate. Oh, whoop. So that's Jessica. There's Chris. That's Kate. Um, Editor-in-chief, she'll make sure everything is spelled correctly, punctuation is correct, style is good. Levi, logo, Alexa, illustrator, graphics illustrator, and logo designer. Charisse, graphics illustrator, logo designer. Jen, graphics illustrator, logo designer. They're all highly creative, young, enthusiastic professionals that work for you and all their work is free. That's how you can get a team of marketing professionals to work for you for free. So I wanted to save the best for last. And how do you get to meet them? Well, they're at natchiorg slash marketing. They're also on our contact page, natchiorg slash contact. If you haven't spoken with Jessica, director of marketing, um, you've made a mistake, right? So you have to work on your marketing. InterNACHI provides all of the training and certifications. It's online and live classes. You got to be good at what you do in marketing. You have to take the home inspection business course because you have to think of yourself as a business owner and you have to work on your marketing, which it never ends because the purpose of marketing is to have an, to choke on customers demanding your services, right? That's the point and it never ends, never stops. All right. So I think that's it. That's the home inspection business course. Do you have any questions? Uh, how soon, Randall asks, how soon after inspection do you provide the hard copy of your report? And do you charge extra? Really, you asked, do I charge extra for adding value? Come on, were you paying attention during class? I don't charge anything extra. It's all included. Everything's included in my inspection. The home energy score, the home maintenance book, the infrared, printing. <laughs> sure, I'll print that. This is, this is included. This is included. This is the value. This is one of the reasons why I will beat you in the market. Right, Randall? Just we're friendly competitors, right? I'm going to try to figure out what value I can provide at no cost. Because no cost is better than cost. I could charge, oh, uh, $5 if you want to put it in a binder and print it. I'll charge you an extra five bucks. Yeah, that's not going to work, right? So um, I asked my client, would they like to stay an extra 15 minutes? And I'll print out the entire report and bind it for them. If they can't, I will um, email it to them. That's it. So they don't get the binder if they don't want to wait. If they want, don't want to invest the 15 minutes, they don't get that special binder. Sometimes they'll ask for it. Most people don't, and that's okay. That's okay. I think if I had another chance, I'd probably mail, I'd ship every client their inspection report in a binder. I just didn't figure out that. It didn't come up in our strategy. But that's probably a pretty good strategy. I would love to have all of my clients with a copy like this. Because they're not going to throw this out. It's going to last forever. This is a marketing piece that works for me, you know, without any cost. Because this gets passed around, or at least it's on the shelf. They won't throw this out. It's too valuable, you know, especially in America. They just don't throw stuff out. And 
books, especially home maintenance books. You know, so yeah, this is one of those marketing pieces that works for you. To you have to set up some systems that work for you in your marketing strategy, like that marketing team that I mentioned. Um, questions: What what documents are included in your folder that you give to your clients? Yep, uh, it would be a copy of the agreement, but nowadays it's all online. Um, if I can print it out, I would. But in here is um, a piece of marketing that comes from the international marketing team. And it's about um, um, home maintenance inspections. So I'll come back every year and make sure that your home has been inspected because every home um, falls apart, you know? And so you got to know how to operate it and how to maintain it. Um, every roof should be inspected every year. Every roof should be inspected every year. I'll say it again. Every roof should be inspected every year, especially if you're in a cold climate and really important if you're in a cold climate with a flat roof, right? Uh, if you're in a cold climate with a flat roof, you should get inspected before and after winter, before winter to prepare for what's about to happen and after winter to see what you need to repair because those flat roofs are just, or low slope roofs, right? Um, here's a free negligent referral protection for real estate agents. Uh, up to ten thousand dollars, and that's free membership benefit. Um, here's oh, oh. Um, know how your home is a door hanger. I would, I'd walk if I had this when I was a home inspector. I'd all my neighbors would have their home scored because I want my neighbors to have a fight with each other about getting a home energy score number that's higher. Than their neighbors, right? How does your home score? It does it score better or worse than your next door neighbor? And what does the score mean, right? So you get a home energy score. It's a scale of one to ten. It takes me about a half hour, fifteen minutes, alone, uh, as a separate service, or it doesn't take me any extra time if I'm doing a home inspection to do a home energy score. And it provides um, recommendations. Um, that allow my clients to uh, save energy, which um, means that they are wasting less energy and their house is in bleeding energy. And that means they can reduce their utility bills. And that means they're saving money. So they're saving about $1,000 a year if they, on average. Um, I like this door hanger. This room has been inspected and it's monster free. How do I know that? Because I checked under the bed in the closet behind the curtains, under the rug, behind the dresser, and behind the pictures. Some nice things to pass out. Um, there's so many things that I would include. Uh, oh, I already showed you this. I don't have everything, but I have a uh, half a dozen things. Um, fire safety for your kids, a little coloring book, an activity book that would stick in there. Let's see, what else do I have in here? I got that, got the mold thing. Got the homeowner newsletter, how to subscribe to my free homeowner newsletter. It's five years worth of newsletter, monthly newsletters, and it's customized to the home that you inspected. So um, let's say you inspected a home um, and the home has a hole in it. Uh, the, the roof has a hole in it. Um, there's missing GFCI in the bathroom and the water tank is leaking. Well, the first issues of the home maintenance newsletter, it's pretty amazing, it's customized to the home that you inspected, talks about repairing the roof and maintaining it, talks about the safety features of a GFCI and why you need them, and it also talks about um, maintaining your hot water tank. So that's in there for so my clients can um, subscribe to the homeowner newsletter. And then there's the buyback guarantee, and it actually will buy the home back full purchase if I miss anything and it's covered by the the guarantee it's incredible so a few things like that are included our marketing ideas our live classes our live classes at your headquarters freedom members um, there's there's a five day class and every um, we have five certified master inspectors that are your instructors and mentors as you move through the house and experience how to perform a home inspection 
at the House of Horrors during the class. We pay those inspectors, so therefore we charge um, for the five-day class, and it's $1,800 for five days. Everything else, you can just come on in. If you wanted to check out the House of Horrors, the doors are open, 9 to 5, and um, it's free to you. You can spend all day here. You can have lunch here, whatever you want to do, and practice inspecting the House of Horrors at the Internet headquarters. Um, we have one in Boulder, Colorado, and we are opening one by the end of the year at our Florida campus um, near Miami. Um, uh, how much would you... Uh, Chris asks, how much would you invest in a gift basket for each real estate agency? Um, right. So I got to the point where I had peach buds, uh, customized little candies. Um, they're about this big, and you fold it open, and you reach in, and there were like three or four pieces of candy, highly customized, expensive candy. It looked expensive. It actually wasn't. And I gave each one to um, real estate agents and a bunch during presentations and drop-offs. Um, so there's a lot of ideas. The idea was for me was I really didn't like to talk about our inspection company. What I wanted to do, it's kind of funny, just feed them. So I brought candies. Um, I brought peach things. Peach, um, peach Inspections was our company name. And so um, one of the great things that I did was um, I delivered peaches in, when they were in season, fresh peaches to the um, offices. I, I didn't like the big offices, big Coldwell Banker offices or something. So I went to the small offices that don't get visited very much. And so if you show them love, they show you love. So I delivered peaches. I would also host um, real estate meetings um, and I'd bring fresh baked warm peach pastries with napkins, forks, knives, and business cards and flyers. And I'd set it up in the middle of the table, the office manager would allow me to come in a half hour prior and just sit down and then they would have their meeting and who knows what happened. I don't even know. I didn't do any presentations. I was in and out because I did five of them real quick. Boom, boom, boom. Went to the offices with a bunch of peace patriots, delivered them, and then did my inspections, right? I would hear about these peach pastries for years later. That was the best peach Danish I ever had. Years later, people would be talking. I had real estate agents um, who turned into my ambassadors because they ate peach inspections. That's how I thought of it. Kind of funny. So gift baskets are good, um, but probably one of the best things you could do in your marketing, I have a lot of ideas, some of them work, some, most of them don't, is to actually ask, I did this, is to ask your best real estate agents, um, what would you consider um, to be a really great inspection? What would you consider to be the perfect home inspection company? Let them tell you. Let them tell you what they want. Well, I expect my home inspector to do an inspection in about two hours. Okay, maybe you can tweak your speed Get efficient and provide that. I expect my home inspector to um, show up early. All of the other inspectors, they show up late and they don't even care. I expect my home inspector to show my client everything in the home while they're inspecting. Okay, If they're telling you what they think are the characteristics of the greatest home inspection company on the planet, why don't you take that information and offer it to them? Offer what your clients or agents of your clients demand, right? Now you are adjusting your services according to what your clients think they need. So that's what I would do. Maybe have a, a discussion. Ask some people, what do you think are the best characteristics of a home inspector? What do you need out of a home inspection service? Your client is going to hire a home inspector what kind of home inspector come what kind of home inspection company would you like to see show up at the front door now you don't even have to think you could be the dumbest person in the world they're telling you what they want just return them and provide what they demand
It's probably a good strategy. You may want to try it out. Uh, how much investment is required to purchase tools? Uh, we went over this, a couple hundred bucks. And the tools are behind me. Flashlight, GFCI, voltage tester, maybe sh some indoor-only shoes, because you never want to walk into someone's home. And I don't like booties. The little booty shoe cover things, no, it was never me. So I um, popped off my sneakers, because soft. you want a soft sole shoe for the roof. I walked on the roof. We talked about that before. Um, and I put on my indoor only sh shoes and guess what picture shows up in my inspection report? Click my indoor only shoes, right? Because my inspection report is my marketing piece. Will they put your company logo on the binder? Yeah. So anything that I can hold in my hand, we can customize it for you. So let me just grab some things, right? So if you want this customized, the home maintenance book, we can customize it for you. Anything you want. Um, this thing, you want to customize, you want to put your logo on it, we can do that for you. This, you want your logo on this, you want your logo on that, yeah, anything. Anything that I can hold on my hand that's printed can be customized. Because we just put this, because this is what internet is, like a standard thing. If you want your face right here, we can put your face right there, right? And we'll probably have to figure out what the cost is. I know that this cost Grand Mountain Home Inspections the same price as an uncustomized book. So the other things we'll have to, so the director of marketing, Jessica, should be called. Call her up. Do you sell yearly inspections to clients as an ancillary service? Yeah, I do. So um, I try to do it for half the speed and half the price. So if it was 396, I'll go in there for only an hour and make about 200 bucks. That's pretty good for me. I've got, a, I've got a client database. It's like gold. My client database over the years, if you did 50 inspections, guess what, guess what you do the next year, right? You should have 100 inspections the next year because if you do 50 every year, 50 new inspections, and then your past clients, you should be contacting them, keeping in contact with them, using these marketing pieces like the newsletter or the home maintenance book, right? Inviting them to your house for a barbecue every year. They're your neighbors, get to know them, keep in contact with your past clients and offer them services that they are maybe unaware of. It's not their job, right, to know what they need. It's really yours. They need a roof inspection. They need a radon test. You know, remind them if you are, we did an unfinished basement in your house, right? So when you go to finish it, EPA says if you finish an unfinished basement, if you change the basement, you should test it for radon. And they don't care where that house is in the United States. They just say test it, right? So th that could be a, a service. Imagine having all of your past clients know you and hire you as you keep going, right? That's amazing, that's, that's like gold. You should be mining your past clients. They've already hired you once. You're already the trusted expert that they love. And they've already hired you before. Keep in contact with them. Tell them, maybe they don't say anything, they don't reply at all, and then five years later, right, you're still in business, of course, they go to move, guess who they're gonna hire, right? So your past clients are really valuable. That's a great question, Cody. All right, everybody. That was two hours. I forget who I talked to about the time, but yep. So if you have any questions, we're on the contact page. I hope you enjoyed the class about home inspector marketing and business. Um, please go to natchi.tv to register for the next class. My name is Ben Gramico from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. Bye, everybody. See ya. See you in the next class.